There are three lessons in this training system. Lesson 1, Statistical Process Control Concepts, explains why it is to the operator's advantage to apply SPC techniques. The goal is to assure the operator that the implementation of SPC will make his job easier. The portion that follows explains why measuring a subgroup is necessary when evaluating the current condition of the process. Under normal methods of measurement when SPC is not used. For example, suppose you measured one part and found its size close to the tolerance limit. You might decide to make an adjustment so the parts would be closer to the center of the tolerance range. Yet that one measurement does not tell you where the process is centered. Suppose the part you measured was actually at this end of the bell curve. Therefore, that part would not represent an average dimension produced by the process. You would have made an adjustment you didn't need to make since the parts were not really going out of tolerance. In other words, you would have made more work for yourself by making adjustments that weren't necessary. What if that measurement happened to be at the other end of the curve? In this case, a lot of parts would be out of tolerance, yet since you don't know where the process is centered, you don't know how much to adjust it. Adjusting the machine the same amount as before would not solve the problem. You would still be producing a large percentage of parts out of tolerance. Remember that the movement of the average size of the dimension is only one problem SPC will help you find. The other is changes in the range of the dimensions being produced. What if that part you measured was at this end of the curve, and instead of the center having moved, the process range had widened? Making the same adjustment as before would have created parts out of tolerance. You would have caused the very problem you were trying to prevent. Knowing where the process is centered, how wide it is, and the direction in which it is moving can enable you to work smarter, not harder. The second method of statistical process control is called pre-control. Lesson 2 explains how to gather a subgroup, then measure, calculate, and plot both x-bar and r values. It also explains how to recognize out-of-control conditions as the next segment indicates. These charts, you must be able to recognize the three conditions that would indicate that the process is out of control. The first condition is when a point is plotted above the upper control limit. On the R chart, it would indicate that the range of sizes within the subgroup had increased beyond the normal variation found during the capability study. Again, a point plotted above the upper control limit on the R chart would indicate the process was out of control. The second condition which indicates a process is going out of control is called midpoint shift. Midpoint shift shows up in two ways. First, it would be indicated by plotting nine or more points in a row on one side of the center line. Second, midpoint shift can also be detected when you find that 13 out of 15 points fall on the same side of the center line. This also indicates the center of the process has shifted. There must be an assignable cause for this shift. The third indicator of a process going out of control is called a trend. If a series of seven or more points show a steady movement toward either the upper control limit or the lower control limit, it is time to look for the problem. There is another type of control chart that may be used in your shop. It explains how the control limits are calculated for each type of SPC control technique. The segment that follows explains how to calculate the upper and lower control limits after the data is collected during a capability study. It then describes how to determine which control system to use. Once the x-bar value and r value are computed for each subgroup taken, you will need to find two additional numbers before you can compute the control limits for a control chart. The two values are called x double bar and r bar. Remember that the bar symbol means the average of. Therefore, the x double bar is the average of the x-bar values and the r bar is the average of the r values. To find the x double bar, add all the x bar values together and divide by the number of x bar values. In our example, add all six x bar values together and divide by six. Your answer will be the x double bar value. The x double bar value is the center line or average line on an x bar control chart. Next, compute the r bar value. 
Add all R values together and divide by the number of values. The R bar value is the center line on the R chart. These two values, the X double bar and R bar, are used... But before we make up a control chart and begin the production run, we need to find out how capable the process is. The X double bar value is the midpoint of the distribution of sizes. By placing a line representing this value on a scale that represents the allowable range of the dimension, you can see the location of the midpoint. The next question is how wide is the distribution? Use the R bar value to find the width of the distribution. Since the X double bar represents the middle of the distribution, it would be the highest point of the bell-shaped normal distribution curve. The R bar value, when superimposed over the X double bar, will show you the ends of the curve. You must center the R bar value over the X double bar line since the R bar value is the average total range of variation. The X double bar line should split the R bar value in half. Now you can see how the process compares to the tolerance allowed. The next question is which method of statistical control should be used? You could use X-bar and R charts, of course. Those control charts are very precise and an excellent tool, but they require a lot of work as well. You could use pre-control. It is less precise, but faster and easier. Then there are median and range charts, which still require charting, but don't require as much computation. You can find answers to these questions by finding the operating ratio of the process. The operating ratio. You have just seen portions of the lessons from this master task training system. Are you ready to take the test? I think you'll agree, simply watching video is not enough. More than just tapes and manuals, Master Task provides you with a complete instructional system specifically designed to cause your machinery operating personnel to not only retain what they see, but develop the skills necessary to put it into practice. For an opportunity to learn more about how these materials can help you reach your goals, please give us a call. One of our training specialists will be happy to discuss your needs.